Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the video. Um, today we're going to take a look at Next DNS. I know that that was something that a lot of people had questions about. So just a brief overview of what Next DNS is. Um, Next DNS blocks ads and trackers on websites and in apps and provides in-depth in analytics and real-time logs. Um, that's the definition from their website. Um, just try and think of it as a pie hole on the cloud. Um, and of course without the daily updating a block list, which can get annoying. Um, I've used NextDNS for quite a while now, and it's, it's lightning quick, and it also has a 100% success rate in blocking ads and malicious content, at least in my personal testing. Um, I'd like to point out before we begin that they do have a paid tier that will set you back $20 a year. Honestly, I think it's worth it. It gives you unlimited queries. Um, the free tier should be fine for pretty much anyone since it allows up to 300,000 queries per month. If you're just going to be using this personally or on you know, one or two devices, that should be fine. I went with the paid tier since I have this deployed on my home network and not just on one or two devices. Alright, let's jump into a quick demo. So I have the next DNS website pulled up here. And before we jump in, I want to go over the benefits of using a DNS resolver. Uh, I know I previously mentioned that it blocks ads and trackers on websites, but I never really explained what a DNS resolver is, so here it goes. DNS stands for Domain Name Servers, and it is what your web browser uses to convert web addresses you type into your, the URL bar, the search bar of your browser, into that website's actual IP address. So let's say you were to type in ESPN.com um, into your browser, what you don't see happening is that when you type in a website address, the browser first checks with a DNS server to find the actual IP address, which is hidden from the user, and then uses it to access the website. So the interwebs are still out there, and if you knew the IP address of the website you wanted to visit, you could type that directly into the search bar and access it. But it's easier to remember ESPN.com instead of some string of numbers. So think of a DNS resolver or server as a middleman in the internet. You tell it where you want to go, it finds the right IP and sends you on your way. Another benefit to using a DNS resolver like NextDNS is the most internet service providers don't have the world's greatest DNS servers, you know, they could be slow, and that probably means you aren't getting the most snappy internet that you're paying for. I pay for gig speed internet, but if I use Xfinity's DNS servers, then it's still gigabit speeds, but the latency is very low and websites are not snappy. Now, like I said before, using NextDNS will help speed up the loading of web pages, not by making your internet faster, but by speeding up the DNS response time. This in turn allows your web browser to start loading the web page more quickly. NextDNS also blocks ads and trackers. Uh, if you've ever used Pi-hole or an ad blocking extension on your browser, you probably have an idea of how this works. When you load a website, there can be for lack of a better term, add elements built into the website. This means that when you connect to a website, you're also connecting to other, shall we say, mini websites that are serving ads. NextDNS will detect those ads and will ref refuse to send any information about you to them by zeroing out the request. Therefore, the ads never get loaded in the first place and the website loads up that much faster. Well, now that we went over the basics, let's set up a NextDNS account for free. All right, I'm on the website right now, and they give you a seven day free trial. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna hit try it now. Now, as you can see up here, it says the temporary account will expire in seven days and is only accessible from this browser. That's fine. I'm just using this to show you how to set up next DNS and how to set up your machine to route all the traffic through it. Now this is the dashboard right here. You're going to see your endpoints, the ID um, of your next DNS server. You're also going to see you can use DNS over TLS, which is awesome. DNS over HTTPS. And then these are going to be your IPv4 servers right here. Now typically when you redirect the traffic of a machine, let's say your Windows computer, for example, you're going to use these IPv4 IP addresses and you're going to route the DNS traffic through those IP addresses. I'll show you how to do that later. They also have some handy tools 
It's basically supported on every platform, so you really don't have any excuse for not downloading it. Um, I have it set up on my router. So what I did was I have a Google Wi-Fi router and I set the DNS to go directly to next DNS. And so every device on my home network is forced to use next DNS for the DNS resolver. It's pretty handy because it blocks ads network wide instead of device wide. Now for this example here, I'm going to show you how to change the network settings so that you can point your existing uh, network settings sorry I'm just opening this window here point your existing network settings to these DNS servers so we're gonna come in here and as you can see I'm connected over Ethernet I'm gonna hit properties and I'm gonna come over to DNS settings and hit edit Right now, it's automatic. It's using the internet uh, service provider's DNS settings. I'm gonna hit manual. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna input the IPv4 DNS IP addresses. So let's do that right now. 45.90.28.248. And I'm gonna copy this over because we just have to change two digits in here for that second one. Once again, you can see that right here. Now I'm gonna hit save. And now, as you see, my DNS server is routing through there. So if we come up here, we're gonna see this says, this device is using next DNS with no configuration. Make sure you link your IP address in the linked IP section below. Let's take a look at the security tab now going to open that up. Now by default some things are checked. You have threat intelligence feeds, Google safe browsing, crypto jacking protection, IDN homograph attacks protection, not sure what those are. Um, and then of course you have other ones that you can add as well. Now you can add a top level domain. So let's say if we wanted to block all websites that end in Dot recipes for example because we hate that recipes then you could add that top level domain and whenever someone tries to go to you know recipes dot recipes then it's going to be blocked because it's a top level domain block now we also see up here I'm not sure why it says protects against COVID phishing but kind of cool all right we're going to move on to privacy now that this is where all the magic happens when it comes to blocking ads. On here you can add as many block lists as you want. These block lists are found online and you, you can actually go to the GitHub pages of these developers and see what they've added to their block list. If you've ever used a pie hole you know exactly what block lists are and how to use block lists. The nice thing is, is that you don't have to go in every day to your pie hole and update the block list or write a script to automatically update the block list whenever something is new released. So let's take a look in here. These is on that block list is not going to make it through the filter, if you will, of next DNS. So yeah, there's some great stuff in there. I always recommend the Energized Ultimate. You can go to the GitHub and see what websites they have on there, what regex block lists they have on there. It's pretty pretty nifty. Now they also have tracking protection. Um, one great feature about this is that you can block tracking on operating systems. So right here, if you wanted to block all tracking that Microsoft does on your Windows device, you can add that and it'll add regex um, blocking for those tracking. If you want to do that for Apple, you can do that as well. And that's on iOS, Mac OS, and tvOS. Pretty handy. Now let's go up to the parental controls. This is another handy um, handy tool that NextDNS offers. If you ever wanted to block any website, um, category of website, or if you wanted to put YouTube into restricted mode or enforce safe search across the network or on the dev a device, then you can do that here. I'm just gonna come in here and you can see you can block any website provided that the device you're blocking it on is using NextDNS as a DNS resolver. So let's say you wanted to block 
um, TikTok because it's cancer, and Tinder, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and Fortnite. Now that we have those blocked, if we were to try and go to um, Tinder.com or let's do Instagram.com, that will be blocked. You won't be able to reach it. Let's also try Tinder. You aren't able to reach that. And then finally, TikTok. You're not able to reach TikTok either. It's, it's pretty nifty. Um, there's really no way around this. If someone does try to set up a VPN, they won't be able to reach it still. So I'm gonna click on that right there. Now, if anyone tries to get around this, this firewall, if you will, they like to call it a firewall, but it's really just a DNS resolver. But for this, for this terminology, I guess, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, you can also block specific categories. So if I wanted to come in here and block porn, gambling, dating, piracy, and just all social networks, then you can block those there as well. Let's go up to the custom deny list where there's a custom allow list as well. So let's say I wanted to block a specific website. Um, let's say google.com. Now, I don't like Google. Um, Google doesn't like me, so I'm gonna block Google. And if we try and go to google.com, it is gonna show up as blocked. It's pretty nifty, especially if you're trying to block a specific ad website that may have gotten through the block lists. You can just add it here as well. And last but not least, let's go to the analytics page. Um, you can see here, it's already started working. So, so far I made 66 queries and it looks like eight of those were blocked. And if we come down here, we can see which ones were blocked. So we got TikTok, Instagram, Tinder, and these are tracking websites from looks like Microsoft and Google. You can also see down here the blocked reason. So if you ever wanted to see which um, block list is performing the best or which one's blocking the most, you can see that right there, it's the Energized Ultimate. Let's also go to the logs. Now I'm going to have to blur out this entire side over here with my IP address. But if you look at the logs here, then what you'll be able to see is you'll be able to see any website that we've gone to. And you can also see raw DNS logs, so you'll be able to see any query that we've made. It's pretty handy, especially if you're trying to you know, make sure someone's not going some places you can see where they've gone. Pretty much with settings, you got some basic stuff. You can download logs, you can display a custom block page, and you can tweak some performance settings. Um, and then you can also delete this configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this since we're done with the demo. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope I was able to shed some light on what next DNS is and what DNS resolvers do for you and your you know, you're browsing every day on the internet. Hopefully you'll be able to use this. I would encourage you to use it on your home networks if you can. It'll block a lot more stuff if you do it that way because every device on the network on your Wi-Fi will have that automatically enabled. It's pretty handy. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.